Well, concerns are rising about the small but growing number of children hospitalized with a coronavirus-related inflammatory syndrome. Health officials say New Jersey is now investigating more than a dozen cases of the illness in children ages 3 to 18. In Delaware, a few cases have been seen at AI DuPont Hospital for Children since April. And in Pennsylvania, there are no confirmed cases, but several are suspected. Officials say doctors should be called if children have symptoms, including persistent fever, very red eyes, swollen. Well, we'll go through all the yeah. uh, symptoms with our doctor, because we have a doctor here. Yeah, let's leave that Dr. up to Jen. her. She knows better than us. Dr. Jen <laughs> Cottle joins us. Good to see you, Dr. Jen. Good to see you. Okay, we've been doing this, we're covering this for about a week now, and it, gets, it seems to be getting worse. And they keep bringing up this Kawasaki disease. It's like Kawasaki disease, or it's like toxic shock syndrome. I think a toxic shock having to do with tampons and stuff like that. What, mm -hmm. the, what is Kawasaki disease so we can understand this thing? Right. So that's a great question, Mike. Uh, Kawasaki disease is something that we've been, we've known about in medicine and has happened over the years. It's a condition that happens in children predominantly. Um, it's an inflammatory condition. It's a condition where uh, children get inflammation of blood vessels all throughout their body, but in particular, they also get inflammation of their heart. Um, it's a, it's, Kawasaki disease is a syndrome where children get sort of wide ranging symptoms. They get rash, they get a high fever, they get red eyes, they get a tongue that looks red, almost like a strawberry, oh we call it strawberry tongue, lymph nodes, right? So, so there's a lot of things that go into this. So when we say Kawasaki-like, we're referring to this condition that we have seen over the years and that these children presenting now are having some symptoms similar to this Kawasaki disease. But it's not COVID-19. Is it even related to it? So we think that it, it likely is related because many of these children that are presenting with these many symptoms, Alex, you started to mention some of them, um, they have tested positive for antibodies to COVID or were infected with COVID prior. So we think that there probably is some connection, but once again, because COVID is so new and, and this sort of inflammatory condition we're seeing in kids is so new, we can't say that for sure, okay. but we think it's, it's connected. Okay. Well, you brought up the symptoms. Let's go over the, some yeah. of the symptoms. Like, what is it doing to our kids? Right. So, I and mean, Mike, you also said toxic shock syndrome. You, yeah. you associate that with tampons, and that's not a wrong association because that's what we often think about it. The connection between to, between toxic shock syndrome and Kawasaki and why we throw all of that in a boat is because they are both sort of inflammatory conditions where the body, uh, you know, sort of uh, immune system is going haywire. And some of the symptoms between toxic shock and Kawasaki's can overlap. So Alex, to your point, the symptoms that we are seeing in these kids, they're often coming in with a high fever that they've had for a number of days. Um, and this is where I tell parents, look, if something doesn't seem right, the kid's still got a fever, you, you take them in to be evaluated. Often the kids also have a rash. Um, mm -hmm. They often have red eyes, swollen lip nodes, like in the neck, kind of like in this area. Um, many of them also have abdominal symptoms like nausea, vomiting, uh, diarrhea, things of that nature. Uh, there are other symptoms that kids can get too, swelling of the hands, um, peeling of the hands. So I know it seems like a lot of random stuff, but these are symptoms we often see with these inflammatory conditions. And that's what these kids yeah. are often presenting with. So I was reading about it yesterday. Now, when you say really oh, quickly, sorry. Mike, really, really quickly though, because when it comes to the symptoms, we are seeing some of these cases in our area. Are we seeing all of these symptoms in the kids that are here locally? Uh, so with every child, and every child that sort of presents with this, you know, there's going to be some variations, and we should expect that. You know, it's, it's also kind of like COVID. With COVID disease, we're seeing COVID present very differently with different people. So a child may not have all of those symptoms. They may only have a couple of them, you know, but the idea is for parents to be extra vigilant and look out for, you know, things, irregularities that they're seeing in their child that just don't seem right. Yeah. Would these... Would these kids be healthy in the first place or are they underlying conditions with them? Yeah, that's a great question because really what you're asking is why is this happening and why is this happening to the certain kids, right? Um, so there's a lot that we still have to understand here. Um, many of the children have seemed to have been healthy prior to this. The one, the one connection that we know about right now is this potential link to COVID-19, but even some reports are saying that not all children had that. You know, honestly, there are more questions than answers, and the yeah. CDC is working on what we call a case definition to really put together, okay, what do we doctors and parents, what do we need to be looking for? Um, but yeah, you know, honestly, the, I think the verdict is still out. I think we still have much more to learn about this. Okay. Uh, 
it seems like we do have a lot to learn. Do we know anything as far as gender? Does gender play a part in how sick you get or if you get this at all? Yeah, great question. We also have been asking those questions with COVID-19, right? Because with COVID, uh, we've, we've had reports that men you know, may get uh, more serious illness, et cetera. Uh, once again, I still think, Alex, with this, there's still more that we need to learn. And, and I also want to say to parents as well, um, we are seeing more cases of this severe illness in kids. And I know that it's very scary, but we still do feel that kids overall are still right. less and less severely affected than adults. Um, this is rare, although we are seeing more cases. So, so be extra vigilant, but do, but don't be don't be paralyzed by fear. That's yeah, important. Most of the study has been about these 18 kids, and I think 13, 13 of them were boys. Uh, Dr. Jen, always good. Thank you. Thank you.